Let's uh, talk a little bit about the assumption that uh, the expected value of the error term conditional on the explanatory variables is equal to zero. So our usual regression model is this, yi equals beta zero plus beta one times xi plus epsilon i, and this epsilon i stands for other factors and also measurement error. And we'll usually assume that the expected value uh, of, uh, sorry, this should be uh, EI, the expected value of the error term conditional on the XI is equal to zero. So on average, um, the error terms conditional on the XI are equal to zero. There's some positive, there's some negative, so that uh, they average out to be zero. So it isn't the case that for high values of X, the errors are largely positive, and, and so there's a positive error when x is high, or if x is low, that the errors are negative. Instead, we assume that the errors on average are equal to zero, that the effect of the other factors on the outcomes uh, are orthogonal to the, uh, to the values of x. They're independent of the value of x. If uh, this assumption is not true, if it's uh, not equal to zero, then the error term and the xi's are, are they're correlated. When x is high, um, maybe the errors are high. When x is low, the errors are low. Or, or the inverse, when x is high, the errors are low, and when x is low, the errors are high. Either one of those could be the case. In that case, our least squares assumption is violated, and we can talk a little bit about the intuition of why that is a really important assumption by going through three examples. So the first example, suppose we have our test score as the outcome and our student-teacher ratio is the explanatory variable and we have our error term and suppose one of those omitted factors, um, unobserved factors, is uh, average income. And suppose that average income is correlated with the student-teacher ratio. So now when we run our regression and we find the coefficient beta 1 hat is equal to negative 2.28. It looks like high student-teacher ratio. We, we say, we interpret the coefficient as being that high student-teacher ratio is associated with uh, lower test scores. But how do we know that high student-teacher ratio might be correlated with low average income? So where there are high students per class, that may also be places with low income, and low income might mean that students aren't, uh, parents of students aren't paying for supplementary enrichment kinds of classes. Their home environments might not be as good for learning, and so those students might have lower test scores. So because there's a correlation between average income and student uh, test ratio, where we have assumed that there is none, right? We've assumed that that's equal to zero, that the expected value of the error term conditional on the student-teacher ratio is equal to zero. We assume that, but suppose it's not true. If it's not true, then when we interpret the coefficient as being the effect of the student-teacher ratio on the test score, we don't know whether that's really being due to different average income levels in these school districts. So we can see that that's a big problem for interpreting our coefficient. Let's take another example. We might have our death rates uh, as the outcome variable and our index of mask mandates, mask wearing, as the explanatory variable. And we say that in counties or districts that have greater, more intense, more restrictive, more stringent mask mandates, we might imagine that the death rate goes down. So we might imagine that beta 1 hat is less than zero. The more mask mandates you have, the lower is the death rate. That depends on our assumption, our assumption that the error term conditional on the mask mandate is equal to zero, and that assumption may not be very valid, right? Because it's entirely possible that the mask mandate is correlated with, for example, with the propensity of people in a county to congregate in crowded spaces. And perhaps places where people congregate a lot in crowded spaces, those are places where people don't want to have mask mandates, and places where people don't congregate are where people do want to have mask mandates. Now we can imagine a scenario where the mask mandate, the masks themselves, do absolutely nothing uh, in terms of preventing COVID. It's really congregating in crowded spaces that causes COVID. But now it's going to look like the mask mandate affects the death rate, but really it's because the mask mandate is 
is correlated with the propensity to congregate in crowded spaces. And that's the real determinant we might imagine. This is all hypothetical, right? We might imagine that the propensity to congregate in crowded spaces is what leads to a higher death rate. The, the point is we can't tell that because this assumption will not be true. We can't assume that it's true. Um, and so we're going to need to do something else. Our regression won't be credible unless we do something else. Um, and our third case is suppose we have a regression where we have GDP per capita uh, in levels. So the U.S. is $50,000 per year per capita. A country like Burkina Faso in West Africa might be $2,000 per person per year. So we have 150 countries of the world and we estimate a regression and maybe our explanatory variable is some index of economic freedom that somebody has calculated, some organization, the Heritage Institute or the Brookings Institute has calculated a, an index of economic freedom. How free are you to start up your own business, to uh, buy property, to uh, sell to anybody that you please? These are commonly collected indicators of uh, economic uh, freedom or restrictiveness of carrying out um, entrepreneurial type economic activity, unregulated economic activity. So we might have that measure of economic freedom. We might imagine that beta 1 is going to be positive. Beta 1 hat is going to be positive. The more economic freedom, the higher GDP. We might imagine that. But our assumption is that the expected value of our uh, error term conditional on the index is equal to zero. That is, it's not... Uh, correlated with, with other variables, but imagine, though, if the index of economic freedom is correlated with the ease of international commerce in terms of transportation, that is, countries that have really good ports and lots of rivers um, and, and are, have a lot of borders with other countries, uh, they uh, uh, ease of access to other countries. Those countries uh, that have really low-cost international commerce might have high economic freedom. So it isn't the economic freedom that determines them having a high GDP. It's really the uh, ease of transport, the low cost of transport that determines their um, GDP. So our regression makes it look like the index of economic freedom, but maybe the ex index of economic freedom doesn't matter at all. It just so happens that it's correlated with low cost of international transport transport, and that's what's really causing higher countries to have higher or lower GDPs. So this is why this assumption uh, that the expected value of the error term conditional on the expansory variable is equal to zero is really important assumption. We'll always want to be checking to see whether it makes sense, and if it's violated, we'll have to do something. We'll have to correct our regression in ways that we'll talk about in subsequent lectures.